William Stafford turned 100 January 17th of 2014 this year. So 2014 is the official centennial commemoration events taking place throughout the year across the nation and around the world. Uh, the events are listed on the website stafford100.org, and that's 100.org. Uh, this event is being filmed and will be recorded and will be made available on YouTube. Uh, the Stafford celebrations are a wonderful way to celebrate Stafford's life and work. He spoke for peace, he believed in nonviolent resolution of conflicts, and his work we want to remember these troubled times. Also, an unpublished collection of his poems was recently found that will be published. The book Winter Ward is his 1954 dissertation for his PhD. Tavern Books has published Winter Ward in both paperback and hardbound. Its publication completes the canon of books that Stafford assembled himself. Now, William Stafford, as Marvin Bell described him, is a genuinely admirable man with a life made out of full cloth. One of the most beloved Northwest poets and one of America's most celebrated poets. William Stafford was born January 17, 1914 in Kansas and was graduated from the Kansas University in 1937. A conscientious objector and peace-loving man, he served in a civilian capacity at the forest camps and social agencies during World War II. After the war, he earned his master's degree at the University of Kansas, and in 1948, began his long teaching career in the English department of Lewis and Clark College down in Oregon, Portland, Oregon. Now, during his teaching years, he earned his Ph.D. from the University of Iowa and raised a family and produced an impressive amount of writing. In fact, he wrote more than 60 volumes of poetry and nonfiction, now, as well as contributions to anthologies and reviews. His first book of poetry, West of Your City, was published in 1960. He taught and traveled widely through the central and western U.S., and lectured in the U.S. Information Agency in the Middle East. Uh, the recipient of many awards, he was Oregon's first Port Laureate. He died August 28, 1993. Now, how many of you want to read today? Okay. Uh, looks like you got, we have sufficient time. You can read five or ten minutes if you want to, and if we finish that, we'll go ahead and go, ahead and go through again. Uh, now be sure you sign the release over there so that it's available to the, uh, for the radio program. And when you come up, would you please state your name into the microphone. And also if you feel like saying a few words about Stafford, I mean what he meant to you, uh, please do so. And our cameraman Todd Boyle, has, he's going to start us off. So Todd Boyle, it's your mic. My name is Todd. Uh I'm going to read from Ask Me, which was published in 2014. Uh, it's a compilation of 100 poems that were previously published in other books. A Memorial, Son Brett. In the way you went, you were important. I do not know what you found. In the pattern of my life, you stand where you stood always, in the center, a hero, a puzzle, a man. What you might have told me, I will never know. The lips went still, the body cold. I am afraid in the circling stars, in the dark, and even at noon in the light. When I run, what am I running from? You turned once to tell me something, but then you glimpsed a shadow on my face and maybe thought, why tell what hurts? You carried it, my boy, so brave, so far. Now we have all the days, and the sun goes by the same. There's a faint wandering trail I find sometimes off through the grass and sage. I stop and listen. Only summer again, remember? The bees, the wind. So I thought I'd start out with that. I'm going to read four items. Uh, but this poem sort of uh, 
puts me in touch with the value of a, of a human being. Sometimes when I read that, I don't know whether I'm the son or whether I'm the father. Um, William Stafford was uh, an anti-war guy, and that, that's kind of why I came today. Um, so I'm going to read some selections that have to do with war. You know, our country has fought many wars since World War II, and uh, we've killed millions of people in these wars. Uh, a couple million people in Korea, two or three million people in the Vietnam War, and then another million in the Iraq and Middle East wars. And none of those people ever attacked America, so why do we kill them? I don't know. At the grave of my brother, bomber pilot, tantalized by wind, this flag that flies to mark your grave discourages those nearby graves. And all still marching this hillside chanting, heroes, thanks, goodbye. If a visitor may quiz a marble sentiment, was this tombstone queried in that country where you slew thousands, likewise honored of the enemy? Reluctant hero, drafted again each 4th of July, I'll bow and remember you. Who shall we follow next? Who shall we kill next time? Entering history. Remember the line in the sand? You were there on the telly, part of the military. You didn't want to give it, but they took your money for those lethal tanks and the bombs. Minorities, they don't have a country even if they vote. Thanks anyway, the majority says, and you're left there staring at the sand and the line they drew, calling it a challenge, calling it ours. Where was your money when the tanks grumbled past? Which bombs did you buy for the death rain that fell? Which year's taxes put that fire to the town where the screaming began? And finally, uh, Peace Walk. We wondered what our walk should mean, taking that unmarched quietly. The sun stared at our signs, thou shalt not kill. Men by a tavern said, those foreigners, dot, 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 to a one with a fur who turned away, like an elevator going down, their look at us. Along a curb, their signs lined across, a picket line stopped and stared the whole width of the street at ours. Unfair. Above our heads, the sound truck blared by the park under the autumn trees. It said that love could fill the atmosphere. A curve slow, the other fallout unseen, on islands everywhere. Fallout falling unheard. We held our poster up to shade our eyes. At the end, we just walked away. No one was there to tell us where to leave the signs. Art Gomez. Uh, learning. A piccolo played, then a drum. The feet began to come, a part of the music. Here came a horse, clippity-clop away. My mother said, don't run. The army is after someone else other than us. If you stay, you'll learn our enemy. Then he came, the speaker. He stood in the square. He told us who to hate. I watched my mother's face. It's quiet. That's him, she said. The way it is. There's a thread you follow. It goes among things that change, but it doesn't change. People wonder about what you are pursuing. You have to explain about the thread but it is hard for others to see. While you hold it, you can't get lost. Tragedies happen, people get hurt or die, and you suffer and get old. 
Nothing you do can stop time's unfolding. You don't ever let go of the thread. Freedom. Freedom is not following a river. Freedom is following a river, though, if you want to. It is deciding now by what happens now. It is knowing that luck makes a difference. No leader is free. No follower is free. The rest of us can often be free. Most of the world are living by creeds too odd, chancy, and habit-forming to be worth arguing about by reason. If you are oppressed, wake up about four in the morning. Most places, you can usually be free some of the time if you wake up before other people. Thank you. My name is Bruce Taylor, Mr. Magic Realism at your service. I'm not too familiar with Mr. Stafford's work, but in the last few years I've become more aware of what he's done and much more appreciative of how he thinks and how he writes. And I think it's a good example what he's done is that, you know, one person can do a lot. One person in concert with like-minded individuals can topple governments. And right now, it's not such a bad idea. I'm going to read several of his poems, thinking for Berkey. In the late night, listening from bed, I have joined the ambulance or the patrol, screaming towards some drama, the kind of end that Berkey must have someday if she isn't dead. The wildest of all her father and mother cruel, farming out there beyond the old stone quarry where high school lovers parked their lurching cars. Berkey learned to love in that dark school. Early her face was turned away from home toward any hardworking place but still her soul with terrible things to do was alive looking out for the rescue that surely someday would have to come. The windiest nights, Berkey, I have thought for you. And no matter how lucky I've been, I've touched wood. There are things not solved in our own town. Though tomorrow came, there are things time passing can never make come true. We live in an occupied country, misunderstood. Justice will take us millions of intricate moves. Sirens will hunt down Berkey. You survivors in your beds, listening through the night. So far and good. Once in the 40s. We were alone one night on a long road in Montana. This was in winter a big night, for to the stars we had hitched my wife and I and left our ride at a crossing to go on. Tired and cold, but brave, we trudged along. This, we said, was our life. Watched over, allowed to go. Where we wanted, we said we'd come back sometime when we got rich. We'd leave the others and find a night like this, whatever we had to give, and no matter how far, to be so happy again. Thanks, I'm Jane Lynn. Uh, I can hardly say enough about how much I admire William Stafford. Prolific peacenik that he was. I just, it's just amazing that he can mix those two things in beautifully. Sure you do. Remember the person you thought you were that summer, sleepwalking into your teens, and your body ambushing the self that skipped from school, 
and you wandered into this carnival where all the animals in the ark began to pace and howl. The swing they strapped you in, the descent through air that came alive to La Paz at the top, the door on the way down that opened on joy, and then, and then, it was a trap. You would get used to it, like the others. You could shoulder your way through the years, take on what came, and stare without flinching. But you knew at the time it was goodbye to everything else in your life. The great door that opened on terror swung open. The annals of Tai Chi push hands. In this long routine push hands, one recognizes force and yields, then slides again, again, endless like water. What goes away? What follows? Aggressive courtesy till force must always lose, lost in the seethe and retreat of the ocean. So does the sail fill and air come just so? because of what's gone? Yes, in all things, yes. Come in, if you insist, and thus conducted, find a way out. Yin following and becoming by a beautiful absence, its partner, Yang. Um, my birthday is three days before William Stafford. So, <laughs> yes! Uh, retirement. After that knife blade, we breathed a film on it like a mirror and looked up. Our children were gone, and in their place, a vacant road continued into a storm. That's when I think we began to know how the rest would be, the soft, careful sound of little worlds falling. Those flakes, every one hit the windshield with a glad sacrifice and then never existed. You could look back and imagine a lifetime of snowflake, incidents again and again, but this time you could hope with religion or some kind of thicker coat on. For certain young readers, you don't have to understand this. Pretend that you don't understand. Go back and inhale, exhale existence. Don't look up now, there'll be plenty of time. Just thinking. Got up on a cool morning, leaned out a window. No cloud, no wind. Air that flowers held for a while. Some dove somewhere. Been on probation most of my life, and the rest of my life been condemned. So these moments count for a lot. Peace, you know like the bucket of memory down into the well. Bring it up, cool, cool minutes. No one stirring, no plans, just being there. This is what the whole thing is about. Thank you. Well, I'm Jay Glenn Evans and uh, William Stafford means a lot to me as a man and as a truly great poet. He was a man of his convictions. In the war, he didn't believe in killing people and he stood his ground. He did uh, forest service and social services, so he didn't fight. And one thing about his poetry, it's poetry that you can understand, it's accessible, and you don't have to work a crossword puzzle out to figure out what he's saying. Uh, this poem, Easter Morning, Maybe someone comes to the door and says, repent. And you say, come on in. And it's Jesus. 
That's when you, oh, that's when you ever did or said or even thought suddenly wakes up again and sings out, I'm still here. And you know it's true. You still shiver alive and are left standing, then suddenly brought to account saved. Except maybe that someone says, I've got a deal for you. And you listen, because that's how you're trained. They told you, always hear both sides. So then the slick voice can sell you anything, even hell. Which is what you're getting by listening. Well, what should you do? I'd always go, go to the door, but keep my screen locked. Then, while you hold the Bible in one hand, lean forward, say carefully, Jesus? <laughs> and this is entering history. Remember the line in the sand? You were there on the telly, part of the military. You didn't want to give it, but they took your money. And those lethal tanks and, bo tanks and bombs, minorities, you don't have a country, even if, you, if, you, even if they vote. Thanks anyway, the majority says. And you're left there staring at the sand and the line they drew, calling it a challenge, calling it ours. Was your money, where was your, where was your money when the tanks grumbled past? Which bombs did you buy? for the death rain that fell. Which year's taxes put that fire to the town where the screaming began? The right to die. God takes care of it for everyone once, and armies figure it out wholesale for others in the air or on the ground at sea. Living, through, living though is a habit, hard to shake. And they don't move the heavy stuff at you till later when you're about ready, usually any time. Still, maybe I'll, I'd help, knowing what I do about need and the grim alternatives. Maybe I'd be very kind when the hurt eyes turn suddenly loud toward me. Old Glory. No flag touched ours this year. Our flags are theirs. Ours cried, banner, banner, all over the sky. The sky now ours, the sea this year, our pond. Thus far, we said, no further. And the storm advanced or stopped or hovered, depending. We won, they say. They say good came. We live in the shadow of our flag. We fear no evil. Salute ye people, that feeling you have, the, they call it glory. We own it now, they say under God, in the sky, on earth as it is in heaven. Ask me. Sometime when the river is ice, ask me mistakes I've made. Ask me whether what I've done is my life. Others have come in their slow way into my thought, and some have tried to help or to hurt. Ask me what difference their stronger love or hate has made. I will listen to what you say. You and I can turn and look at the silent river and wait. We know the current is there, hidden, and there are comings and goings from miles away that hold the stillness exactly before us. What the river says, that is what I say. This is a weather report. Light wind at Grand Prairie, drifting snow, low in vermilion, 40 degrees of frost, lost in the barrens, hunting over spines of ice. The great sled dog, Shadow is running for his life. All who hear in your wide horizon of thought, caught in this cold, the world all going gray. Pray for the frozen dead at Yellowknife. These words we send are becoming parts of their thought, part of their night. Things that happen. 
Sometimes before great events, a person will try disguise at his best not to be a clown. He feels a great event is coming, bow down, and I always look for something anyway, always bow down. Once later, then but early, dawn but early, before the lines of the calendar fell, one of those events turned an unseen corner and came near, near sounding before it something the opposite from a leopard's bell. We were back of three mountains called Sisters, along the Green Lakes Trail, and he crossed the ridge when that one little puff of air touched us, hardly felt at all. That was the great, greatest event of that day. It righted all wrong. I remember it, the day the dust moved there. Something had to come out of the ground and moved calmly along. No one, is a, no one was ahead of us, no one, in all the moon-like land. Oh, I thought how hard the world has tried with its wind, its miles, and its blundering, stumbling days again and again to find my hand. My mother was a soldier. If no one moved on order, she would kill. That's what the gun meant, soldier. No one told you? Her eye went down the barrel. Her hand held still. Gunpowder paid all that it owed at once. No need to count the dead. Hunting, she dragged the bait till nightfall, then hung it, hung it in a tree and waited. Time was working for her and the quiet. What a world it is for thinkers. Contact would come and the wildest foe fall faster, mother said. Tapping on my wrist, she talked. Patience is the doctor. It says try. It says they think we're nice. We quiet ones. We die so well. That's how we win, imagining things before they happen. No harm in being quiet. My mother said, that's the sound that finally wins. Uh, <clears throat> traveling through the dark. <laughs> traveling through the dark, I found a deer dead on the edge of the Wilson River Road. It is usually best to roll them into the canyon. That road is narrow. To swerve might make more dead. By glow of the taillight, I stumbled back of the car and stood by the heap. A doe, a recent killing. She had stiffened already, almost cold. I dragged her off. She was large in the belly. My fingers touching her side brought me to the reason. Her side was warm. Her fawn lay there waiting, alive, still never to be born. Beside that mountain road, I hesitated. The car aimed ahead its lowered parking lights. Under the hood purred the steady engine. I stood in the glare of the warm exhaust turning red. Around our group, I could hear the wilderness listen. I thought hard for us all, my only swerving, then pushed her over the edge into the river. Notice what this poem is not doing. The light along the hills in the morning comes down slowly, naming the trees white, then coasting the ground for stones to nominate. Notice what this poem is not doing. A house a house, a barn, the old quarry where the river shrugs. How much of this place is yours? Notice what this poem is not doing. Every person gone has taken a stone to hold and catch the sun. The carving says, not here, but called away. 
Notice what this poem is not doing. The sun, the earth, the sky all wait. The crowns and red birds talk. The light along the hills has come, has found you. Notice what this poem has not done. Return to say, when I face north, a lost Cree on some new shore puts a moccasin down. Rock in the light and noon foreseeing he in a hurry and I beside him. It will be a long trip. He will be a new chief. We have drunk new water from an unnamed stream. Under little dark trees he is to find a path we both must travel because we have met. Henceforth, we gesture even by waiting. There is a grain of sand on his knife blade. So small, he blows it, and while his breathing darkens the steel, his becomes set and start a new vision the rest of his life. We will mean what he does, Back of this page, the path turns north. We're looking for a sign. Our moccasins do not mark the ground. Burning a book. Protecting each other, right in the center, a few pages glow for a long time. The cover goes first, then outer leaves curling away, then spine and a scattering. Truth, brittle and faint, burns easily. It's fire as hot as the fire lies make. Flame doesn't care. You can usually find a few charred words in the ashes. <clears throat> and some books ought to burn, trying for character but just faking it. More disturbing than book ashes are whole libraries that no one got around to writing. Desolate towns, miles of unthought in cities and the terrorized countryside where wild dogs own anything that moves. If a book isn't written, no one needs to burn it. Ignorance can dance in the absence of fire. So I've burned books, and there are many I haven't written, and no one has. The way it is. There's a thread you follow. It goes among things that change. But it doesn't change. People wonder about what you're pursuing. You have to explain about the thread. But it is hard for others to see. While you hold it, you can't get lost. Tragedies happen. People get hurt or die. And you suffer and get old. Nothing you do can stop times unfolding. You don't ever let go of the thread. didn't really prepare for this reading, but I could open the book anywhere and um, find something fabulous. You reading this, be ready. Starting here, what do you want to remember? How sunlight creeps along a shining floor? What scent of old wood hovers? What softened sound from outside fills the air? Will you ever bring a better gift for the world than the breathing respect that you carry wherever you go right now? Are you waiting for the time to show you some better thoughts? When you turn around, starting here, lift this new glimpse that you have found. Carry into evening all that you want from this day. This interval you spent reading or hearing this Keep it for life. What can anyone give you greater than now? Starting here, right in this room, when you turn around. A dedication. We stood at the, we, sorry, let me start again. A dedication. We stood by the library. It was an August night. Priests and sisters of hundreds of unsaid creeds, past us going their separate, pondered roads. 
We watched them cross under the corner light. Freights on the edge of town were carrying away flat cars of steel to be made into secret guns. We knew, being human, that they were enemy guns, and we were somehow vowed to poverty. No one stopped or looked long or held out a hand. They were following orders received from hour to hour. So many signals, all strange from a foreign power. But tomorrow, you whispered, peace may flow over the land. At that corner, in a flash of lightning, we too stood. That glimpse we had will stare through the dark forever. On the poorest roads, we would be walkers and beggars towards some deathless meeting involving a crust of bread. Many things are hidden by the light. Now I remember letting the dark flow in, how we used to shoot animals, and how they were afraid. We stared into hedges. What we saw, we killed. Now, I know by the cold, at night those hedges run the crazy fields, and we children of light stagger and flash, lost where we triumph, reeling our steadiness toward our terrible homes. Freedom. Freedom is not following a river, though if you want to. It's deciding now by what happens now. It's knowing that luck makes a difference. No leader is free, no follower is free. The rest of us can often be free. Most of the world are living by creeds too odd, chancy, and habit-forming to be worthy arguing about by reason. If you're oppressed, wake up about four in the morning. Most places you can usually be free some of the time if you wake up before the other people. Coyote. My left hind foot steps in the track of my right forefoot, and my, and my hind right foot steps in the track of my fore, fore left foot, and so on, for miles. Me paying no attention while my nose rides along, letting the full report, the whole blast of the countryside, come along toward me on rollers of scent. And I come home with a chicken or a rabbit and sit up singing all night with my friends. It's Baroque, my life, and I can tell on the mountain. I wouldn't trade it for yours. And then some remarks when Richard Hugo came. Some war, I bombed their towns from five miles high, and the flower of smoke and fire, so far there is no sound. No cry, no cry disturbs the calm, through which we fly. Some day, a quiet day, I watch. A grassy field in the wind. The waves forever bounding past and gone. Friends call. I cannot look away. And my life had already, already happened. Some saved up feelings caught, held on, and shook me. Long-legged grass raced out. A film inside my head unwound. The bodies I had killed began to scream. A wind from a wing. Something outside my window in the dark whispers a message. Maybe it's a prayer sent by one of those friends, forgiving me the years when I set out their war. It flared, you know, generating its own reasons for being. Its heroes, anyone killed by, the en by an enemy, they looked up and met frame on a bullet awarded so fast. Their souls remain stuck in their bodies. And then their names caught on flypaper. Citation couldn't escape. Their families eat that carrion and like it. 
That is their punishment. In a sky as distant and as clear as Pascal's nightmare, and immediate as our sweat when God shakes us from sleep, my fate shudders me awake. Little squeals of the unborn fly past in the wind. It is midnight and a motel, and nobody but me remembers my mother, my father, and that hidden key they left by our door when I was out late. The Gift Time wants to show you a different country. It's one that your own life conceals. The one outside when curtains are drawn. The one grandmother hinted at in her crochet design. The one almost found over the edge of the music after the sermon. It's the way of life. It's the way life is. You have it in a few years given. You get killed now and then, violated in various ways, and sometimes it's turnabout. You get tired of that, long suffering, you wait and pray, and maybe good things come. Maybe the hurt just slackens and you hardly feel it anymore. You have a breath without pain, and it is called happiness. It is a balance, the taking and passing along, the composting of where you've been and how people and weather treated you. And it's a country where you already are, bringing where you've been. Time offers this gift in a million ways, turning the world, moving the air, calling every morning. Here, take it, it's yours. This is over in Montana. Winter stops for a visit each year. Dead leaves cluster around. They know what is coming. They listen to some silent song. At a bend in the Missouri, up, the, up where it's clear, teal and mallards lower their wings and come gliding in. A cottonwood grove gets ready. Limbs reach out. They touch and shiver. These nights are going to get cold. Stars will sharpen and glitter. They make their strange signs in a rigid pattern. Above hollow trees and hollows, burrows and houses. The great story weaves closer and closer. Billions of torches, wide spaces lying out in the open. Huddles of brush and grass and all the little lives. <clears throat> what gets away? Little things hide. Sometimes they scuttle away like dry leaves in a sudden wind. Tide pools are full of these panicky creatures, and rock slides have jittery populations hidden from the world and even from each other. Herodotus tells about the shyest animal there is. Even the one, it's the one even Alexander the Great and his whole conquering army had never seen, and the people no matter how hard they try, will never see. Why the sun comes up. To be ready again if they find an owl, crows choose an old tree before dawn and hold a convention where they practice their outrage routine. Let's elect someone. No, no, forget it. They see how many crows can dance on a limb. Hey, listen to this one. One old crow flaps away off and looks towards the east. In that lonely blackness, God begins to speak in a silence beyond all that moves. Delighted wings move close and almost touch each other. Everything stops for a minute and the sun rises. It's said that in any society, especially if they're moving toward tyranny, the first people to go are the artists. <laughs> the artists have a way, and Stafford is no exception, that in their unique voice, they're the voice of everyone. Just as in the voice of everyone, they're the unique voice. And they have a habit of telling people something that perhaps maybe corporate America doesn't like people to know that we are far more similar than we are different. If you're convinced that you're different more than you are similar, you can be sold all sorts of silly crap. So.
so. Be unique, just like everyone else. That's why poets and artists always seem to get hauled off first. So, <laughs> judgments. I accuse. Ellen, you have become 40 years old and successful, tall, well-groomed, gracious, thoughtful, a secretary. Ellen, I accuse. George, you know how to help others. You manage a school. You never let fear or pride or faltering plans break your control. George, I accuse. I accuse. Tom, you have found a role. Now you meet all kinds of people and let them find the truth of your eminence. You need not push. Oh, Tom, I do accuse. Remember the gawky, hardy to survive students. We were not one of us going to succeed, all of us abjectly aware of how cold, unmanageable the real world was. I remember, and that fear was true and is true. Last I accuse myself, my terrible poise, knowing even this, knowing that then we were sprawl in the world and we were ourselves part of it. Now we hold it firmly away with gracious gestures like this of mine we've achieved. I see it all too well and I am accused and I accuse. Aunt Mabel, this town is haunted by some good deed that reappears like a country cousin or truth when language falters these days trying to lie. Because Aunt Mabel, an old lady gone now, would it cost even strangers to give bright flowers away, quick as a striking snake. It's deeds like this have weakened me, shaken my intermittent trust, stricken with friendliness. Our senator talked like war, and Aunt Mabel said, he's a brilliant man, but we didn't elect him that much. <laughs> Everyone's resolve weakens toward evening, or in a flash, when a face melds, a stranger's even, reminded for an instant between menace and fear, there are Aunt Mabel's all over the world, or their graves in the rain. No praise, no blame. What have the clouds been up to today? You can't blame them, you know. Their edges just happen, and where they go is the fault of the wind. I'd like my arrival to be like that, alone and quiet, really present, but never to blame. And I'd never presume or apologize, and if anyone pressed me, I'd be gone, and I'd come back there, only some harmless, irresistible presence all around you, like the truth, something you need, like the air. I'm from the Skagit Valley, and so we have a lot of great blue herons up there, so I'm going to read this spirit of place, great blue heron. Out of their loneliness for each other, two reeds, or maybe two shadows, lurch forward and become suddenly a life, lifted from dawn or the rain. It is the wilderness come back again a lagoon with our city reflected in its eye. We live by faith in such presences. It is a test for us that thin but real undulating figures that promises, if you keep faith, I will exist at the edge where your vision joins the sunlight and the rain, heads in the light, feet that go down in the mud where the truth is. Stafford was a truth teller. Freedom of expression. My feet wait there listening, and when they dislike what is happening, they begin to press on the floor. 
they know when it is time to walk out on a program. Pretty soon, they are moving, and as the program fades, you can hear the sound of my feet on gravel. If you have feet with standards, you too may be reminded. You need not accept what's given. You gamblers, pimps, braggers, op oppressive people. Not here, my feet are saying, no thanks, let me out of this, and I'm gone. <laughs> Looking for someone. Many a time driving over the coast range, down the cool side, hemlock, spruce, and then shore pine, I've known something I should have said one time. If we hadn't met, then everything would have changed. We were judged. Our shadows knew our height. And after dark, exact the air confirmed, all with its move or stillness. We both were trapped in an old-shaped island. Sleep pervades a traveler. Sleep persuades a traveler. I all night, no, no, under the earth escape. And even the sky goes back remote, walking till the stars forget. I look out and watch the smoke of Astoria and seaside cringing along the coast and bare gulls designing the sand. Go flat, go flat, the waves, the little boat, the mild ride light. The sand going democratic, trading places down the wind, everything distancing away. Finding this took all this time. You're not even here. Though we met, everything had changed. Some shadows. You would not want to reserved a speaker, that is cold way to live, but where I come from withdrawal is easy to forgive. When mother was a girl, Indians shadowed the country, that country. The barren lands, mother ran to school winter mornings with hot potatoes in her hands. She was like this, foreigner, a stranger. She could not hear very well. The world was all for. Were the others laughing? She never could tell. Later, though, she was frightened. She loved like everyone. A lean man, a cruel, took her. I am his son. He was called Hawk by the town people, but was an ordinary man. He lived by trapping and hunting whenever the old slow ran. Our house was always quiet. Summers, the windmill creaked. On a, or a board, I carried wood, never touching anyone. Winters, the black stove roared. Forgive me these shadows, I cling to good people, trying to hold quiet in my prologue. Hawks cling the barren wherever I live. The world says, dog eat dog. This is one final poem by me. My father, October 1942. He picks up what he thinks is a road map, and it is his death. He holds it easily, and nothing can take it from his firm hand. The pulse in his thumb on the map says, 1.19 p.m. next Tuesday at this intersection, and an ambulance begins to throb while his face looks tired. Any time, anyone may pick up something so right that he can't put it down. That is the problem. For, we all, for all who travel, they fatally own whatever is really theirs. And that is the inner thread, the lock, what we can hold. If it is to be, nothing breaks it. Millions of observer, millions observers guess all the time, but each person once can say, sure. Then he's no longer an observer. He isn't right or wrong. He just wins or loses. Okay. Uh, we'll go one more short round and then we'll conclude. Uh, Art. Okay. <clears throat> Late at night, falling separate into the dark, the hailstone yelps of geese pattered through our roof. Startled, we listen. 
Those V's of direction swept by unseen so orderly that we paused, but then faltering back through their circle, they came. Were they lost up there in the night? They always knew the way, we thought. You looked at me across the room. We live in a terrible season. A dedication. We stood by the library. It was an August night. Priests and sisters of hundreds of unsaid creeds passed us going their separate pondered roads. We watched them cross under the corner light. Freights on the edge of town were carrying away flat cars of steel to be made into secret guns. We knew, being human, that they were enemy guns and we were somehow vowed to poverty. No one stopped or looked long or held out a hand. They were following orders received from hour to hour, so many signals, all strange, from a foreign power. But tomorrow, you whispered, peace may flow over the land. At that corner, in a flash of lightning, we two stood. That glimpsed we had will stare through the dark forever. On the porous roads, we would be walkers and beggars towards some deathless meeting involving a crust of bread. Was that one already read? Learning. A piccolo played, then a drum beat began to come. A part of the music, here came a horse, quickly clap away. My mother said, don't run. The army is after someone other than us. If you stay, you'll learn our enemy. Then he came, the speaker. He stood in the square. He told us who to hate. I watched my mother's face. It's quiet. That's him, she said. Hunger. When it's your own pain, you notice it. A bird that sings when you go by. No road goes far enough, you understand? And no sound can find the note. Some call has caught what rings hope out of evil history. But we can't reach it, hear it, find a way to deserve even the immediate offering. I reach far beyond the music, run forth to contemplate a clod or a mountain. They help, yes, but no road goes far enough. You understand? Parentage. My father didn't really belong in history. He kept looking over his shoulder at some mistake. He was a stranger to me, for I belong. There never was a particular he couldn't understand, but there were too many in a too long a row, and like many another, he was overwhelmed. Today, drinking coffee, I look over the cup and want to have the right amount of fear, preferring to be saved and not, like him, heroic. I want to be as afraid as the teeth are big. I want to be as dumb as the wise are wrong. I'd just as soon be pushed by events to where I belong. The trip. Our car was fierce enough. No one could tell we were only ourselves, so we drove, equals of the car, and ate at a drive-in where citizens were dining. A waitress with eyes made up to be eyes brought food spiced by the neon light. Watching, we saw the manager greet people, hollow on the outside, some kind of solid veneer. 
When we got back on the road, we welcomed it as a fierce thing welcomes the cold. Some people you meet are so dull that you always remember their names. <laughs> You know, the world is truly a better place because William Stafford passed this way. Now, we have a weekly radio program, KSCR 90.7 FM, every Thursday at 6.30. If you miss it on the radio, uh, you can pick it up on our website, portswest.com, because we published two recent programs on the website. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, see you next year. Thank you.